It's March 21st, 1955, and the Sarge is really mad. But how do we know that this means Using a line of symbols to show obscenity is an established idea today, but it's as old as the early 1900s, when an entirely new visual language was being invented. This is Beetle Bailey cartoonist Mort Walker, and in addition to making soldiers say stuff like in to the he coined the term Grolixes for the obscenity symbols in an essay published for comic artists and later anthologized. Other comic conventions include clues, little sweat drops, briffits, dust clouds when a character disappears, and emanata, lines showing shock. But Walker made a list of tropes, not an origin story. For that, you've got to go back to the turn of the century. <laughs> This is the madhouse of comics in 1896. What we think of as comics basically started with Hogan's Alley and later The Yellow Kid, a spin-off centered on the freak show Irish-American urchin Mickey Dugan. This is him watching a cockfight. Comics were experimental. Panels sometimes had to be numbered so you knew the order to read them in, and dialogue rarely appeared in speech bubbles. Sometimes words showed up on The Yellow Kid. Two comics pushed that innovation to the next level and invented a lot of what we know today, probably including Grolixes. The Cats and Jammer Kids made a paneled story mainstream, showing some naughty little who always got spanked. Cats and Jammer's innovations included consistent speech bubbles, and in the next couple of years, Imanata indicating motion, and maybe even swears. Lady Bountiful, a comic about a rich lady who tried to help some urchins, notice an urchin theme here, joined in this idiomatic arms race. She also had speech bubbles, while other comics still used captions. Those speech bubbles were more visceral than captions. They could show music and weird stuff like ideas and this, the first known Grolix. Now, it's hard to be certain that this really was the first Grolix, but suddenly in 1902 and 1903, there were a ton of them, and only a few comics were innovative enough to employ the new device. In December 1902, the Cats and Jammer Kids joined in with Lady B. These trailblazing comics established how you talk in comics with speech bubbles, and with the Grolix, they established how you showed that you just don't give a This is a 1 kilohertz sine wave. You might not recognize it, but it sounds like this. It solves a problem and creates a feeling, just like the Grolix. It's the fun of transgression and the punishment, all in one smush of symbols. Sure, Sarge gets mad at Beetle for breaking the rules, but Beetle, that little f little f skinny f son of a kind of Sarge loves him, too. Hey, what's up? Two things. First, if you're interested in language nerdery like this, check out Language Log and the writing of Ben Zimmer. Both of those were instrumental in early research on the Grolix, and it helped us get our start. However, I do not want to brag here, but we did find some early Grolixes that are even earlier than the previously known ones. If you want to learn about the research process for something as weird as a Grolix, Vox has a membership program called the Vox Video Lab, where there are a ton of extra videos and information. In the video lab, I have made a video about my research process and exactly how I nerded out over these 1900s comics and found a ton of Grolixes. So check it out if you want to see how it happened.